Hi, this is Kenny with Kenny's Garage. You saw the last video where we removed the 258 straight six 4.2 liter Jeep engine from the CJ5. And we're starting the disassembly of the engine right now so we can inspect the components and find out what we have to do uh, at the machine shop, if anything. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the air injection system. One of the emissions components is a smog pump. It's basically just an air pump that takes atmosphere, fresh air, pushes it into the exhaust manifolds. Um, that fresh air will actually continue the burning process through the exhaust system and uh, give you better results on your tailpipe tests. So if we choose not to run a smog pump when we reassemble the engine, we can plug these holes. They're actually a pipe thread. Or you can go ahead and use an aftermarket intake and an aftermarket exhaust, but I plan on using the same ones. So of the six uh, tubes, if you will, on the smog pump manifold that push into the cylinder head, uh, one of them wasn't even connected, it was just pinched off. They basically have a banjo fitting Works a lot like a carburetor banjo fitting. Pushes air into there. We may end up running the smog pump just to help us pass emissions here in Colorado. But uh, it's really not a problem. It doesn't use a lot of horsepower to turn that pump. Any of these exhaust bolts that break off or are already broken off, just be take time to make sure they're tapped and threaded before you put it all back together. Be careful when you're separating the intake and exhaust manifolds. They do share a lot of common pieces and leave a few bolts in the exhaust manifold when you remove the intake so they don't both just fall on the ground. Exhaust manifold actually allows, uh, the way this one's designed, warm air to push up into the bottom of the intake manifold, which helps it during cold start. It has a valve there. We may remove the valve. Okay, so we're gonna remove the valve cover. I wanna take a look at the valve train. And this particular one was leaking pretty bad about a year ago. I went ahead and straightened it out and reinstalled it to stop the leaks. I uh, use a good uh, silicone. Oftentimes these stamped steel valve covers are over tightened and they warp and they won't seal very well. So make sure you don't over tighten it. Make sure you straighten it out. Uh, hammer it out straight before you reinstall it. So after scraping this for about 15 minutes, I was able to work my way around it. Hey, it was a really good seal. And I, if, if you do it right, you really don't even need bolts a lot of the times, but of course you wanna leave those in there. We'll go ahead and straighten it out, clean it and paint it along with the rest of the block more than likely. We'll be using the factory air cleaner here. So I wanna use the factory valve cover because it has a mount on it a stamped steel piece that's riveted on the top, which helps support the air, air cleaner housing. Push rods, rocker arms, we wanna keep those in order. So as we remove the rocker arms, keep them separated and labeled as far as where they were moved from, what cylinder. Keep your push rods separated and labeled the same way and take your exhaust for each cylinder. Okay, so our next step will be to remove the cylinder head. Stay tuned. 